Seychelles is a cluster of over a hundred islands lying on the coast of East Africa. Once a secluded piece of land, it has now become a popular tourist center and is visited yearly by a large number of honeymooners. Among these clusters of islands is Mahi, the biggest of Seychelles islands and probably the most beautiful. In Mahi lies the Bovalan beach. Its clear skies and clear, shimmering turquoise blue water coupled with beautiful white sand makes it appear like you stole a peak of heaven. And in the evening when the sun sets and casts its weak glow across the horizon, creating beautiful silhouettes of the fishermen as they draw in their nets and catch for the night's grill, you wonder if you truly know the meaning of beauty or ever truly appreciate it. People talk a lot about the beauty of Bovalon, but no one ever talks about its ugliness. No one talks about the tongue twister, a shadow that prowls through the beach with a vengeance. There are a lot of rumors about him, but the only known fact is no one actually knows what he is, whether he is human or the spirit of a bitter past is unknown. He seems to only target honeymooners, breaking into their beach houses without a single break. He is said to move around with a massive machete, which he uses to cleave the couple's heads from their bodies. He then finds a coconut tree on the beach and hangs the couple's heads over a frond by tying their hairs together and twisting their tongues in a way that makes it look like they were locked in a passionate kiss. And on the tree, he carves a heart. All his victims are of the Caucasian race, making some rumors that he was an avenger, avenging the horse dealt to his people by the white man. Maybe that was so, but what business of mine was it? I didn't participate in the slave trade, and neither did my husband. So why did my honeymoon end in so much tear and pain? Why was I awoken in the middle of the night to see a shadow in the corner of our beach house? Why did I have to see my husband struggle with this monster? It was the rustle of the curtains against his skin that woken me up, and my scream had woken Mark. He had tried to talk to him, and he asked if he wanted money. He told him he could take anything as long as he spared us. No, he said as long as he spared me. He thought only about me, and when he struggled with this monster, all I could do was run. I tell myself I ran to get help, but deep down, I know I thought only of myself. By the time help came, my husband was just a headless corpse on the floor. By morning, his severed head was found on a coconut tree with nails in his eyes. And on the tree was carved a broken heart to mock me. Footprints in the sand led from the tree to the ocean. On some nights, I hear that same rustle of curtains on skin. Over on during the night, you may just hear the drip, drip of blood dripping from the severed head of its latest victims. <laughs>